Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. Uh, we're going to talk about building LLM-based applications with Haystack. And uh, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about NLP and LLMs and the generative AI. So I hope you are ready to like, extend your knowledge. So let's go. First, let me introduce myself. I work my name is Bilge. I work as a developer advocate at DeepSet, but mainly around our open source LLM framework, Haystack, which I will be talking about today. I am based in Istanbul, Turkey, but right now I am connecting you from Munich, Germany. Um, I left my some, I left my social accounts here. I, I am on Twitter, on LinkedIn and on GitHub. So if you want to connect with me, you can use any of these channels. Um, I'll talk a little bit about today's agenda. We'll talk about text embeddings, vector databases, retrieval, LLMs, and then we are going to build a generative QA applications with Haystack by combining all of these new or NLP terms. So let's start with text embeddings. Uh, when it comes to language, for us humans, it's quite easy. There are like letters, there are words and sentences. And when I say to be or not to be, it's quite understandable for you what I mean. Uh, but it's not the case for computers. Uh, their language is numbers, so they don't understand from the letters and sentences. So if we want this sentence to be understandable by computers, we need to change this sentence to into their language, into numbers. And actually this representation is called text embeddings, or since this is a list of numbers, we can also call it vectors. Um, and text embeddings are basically the representations of text in number form. And by doing this, we make text uh, manageable by computers. And so they understand. And there are different techniques to do that. You can choose a sparse method, uh, methods like uh, TFIDF, BM25, or you can choose a dense method, which is basically like generating these text embeddings using an embedding model. And this model can be a sentence transformers model, or you can use a model provider like Cohere or OpenAI. Um, so here, uh, what I show in pink is like eight-dimensional eight text vector, but usually these vectors are around 768 dimensions. Well, of course, like this depends on the model or the method you are using to generate these text embeddings. Um, now that we know what text embeddings or like text vectors are, I think like the vector databases term is uh, it makes more sense right now. Uh, vector databases are databases that store high dimensional vectors. Uh, they are kind of different from the traditional databases. The traditional databases are optimized to uh, store uh, numbers or scalar data in rows and columns, uh, whereas vector databases are optimized for vector operations, such as vector search, crowd operations, or metadata filtering. Now it's time for another related term. Retrieval. So imagine you generated your text embeddings, text vectors, and you put them into your vector database. And now what? Uh, probably you'll have a query, and in this case, it's again a text embedding, and you'll like to get some relevant information for your query. And this is exactly what we call retrieval, getting the most relevant information from your database to the query. And the retrieval step is really important uh, for applications, especially for semant semantic search or question answering. Um, before we go into the uh, generative applications, the last term we need to know is LLMs. I'm sure you've heard a lot about this abbreviation. It's and the long form for this abbreviation is large language models. And as the name stands, they are basically big language models. Uh, but recently, we have started to use LLMs, LLM term for generative models. So the models that 
expects a prompt or instruction from the user and produces a human-like output. And um, since because of their generative uh, nature, we use these models in text generation applications such as uh, summarization, generative QA, or we use them to write code, we use them to chat. And here you see a secret shot from one of the most famous uh, gen text generation application is that we call ChatGPT. And I asked ChatGPT to write a poem about Munich and ChatGPT showed its skills and uh, generated a poem for, you, for me. Okay, now we know text embeddings, retrieval, vector databases, and LLMs. And let's see how we can combine all of these to build a generative question answering application. I, as I said, uh, we use prompts to communicate with large language models. And I tried to communicate with ChatGPT again with a prompt, and I asked ChatGPT to um, what is the topic of Bill Gates' talk at PyLadies Con? And ChatGPT uh, answered saying, like, I am sorry, but my knowledge, my, my last knowledge update is in January 2023, so I don't have specific information about events or talks that occurred after that date. So it means that I can't directly use large language models or like ge these generative applications for my questions. And this is a very known limitation of LLMs. LLMs can do a lot of stuff. They can write poems, I, sh I just showed you, but they don't know the answer to everything because their knowledge is up to the certain point back in time, and they don't know what happened in the world later at that time. But good thing is they are really good at following instructions. So we can help them in their task by giving them the relevant context and the instruction. And let's see how we can do that. Um, here, I asked ChatGPT to, ChatGPT to do the same thing, but this time I provided the context. And this context is basically the thing, uh, the text that I got from PyLadiesCon webpage about my talk. And then I instructed ChatGPT to answer the question based on the context that I gave. And I asked the same one. As a result, I could get the answer, which is great. So it, it seems like I can change the prompt in some way and make ChatGPT to answer my question correctly. And this idea of augmenting prompt with the retrieved relevant context to generate text is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or AKA RAC. And this is quite cool because with this approach, we can build a generative QA application today without fine tuning and by just providing a relevant context. And of course, you can imagine that this retrieval step becomes super important for these kind of applications. Um, and as I said, we can instruct uh, LLMs to do anything. Uh, we can ask them to do, ask them to do question answering um, by giving the relevant prompt, or we can ask them to do summarization again, changing the prompt. And this, uh, and there are like endless probabilities they can do anything. But uh, for this uh, presentation, let's see how to create a generative QA application with this RAG approach in practice. And this is where Haystack comes into play. Haystack is a um, fully open source framework built in Python for custom LLM applications. Uh, it provides the tools that developers need to build state-of-the-art NLP systems. And it comes with two main building blocks, pipelines and components. Uh, components are the smallest building blocks. They can do uh, one thing, but they can do very well. And by connecting components to each other, we can create pipelines. And by creating pipelines, we can build uh, applications, generative applications. And let's see which pipelines we need for a generative QA application, for generative question answering application. The first pipeline we need is the indexing pipeline. Uh, we will use this pipeline to 
get relevant documents. Uh, we, we will use this pipeline to use our documents, pre-process them, and put them into our database. Uh, for this example, I'll be using some web pages, so some URLs. Uh, but I mean, you can be very creative about it. It can be your PDFs or I don't know, any books, your markdowns, like anything you can imagine can be the source for this pipeline. And first, I will use the link content fetcher component and fetch the URLs, URL content. And then I'll use HTML to document component to convert all of these HTMLs that I crawled um, to haystack document object. Then I'll use document splitter to split these documents into smaller chunks. And then I'll use an embedding model to create embeddings for all of these document chunks. And of course, I can, as I said, like I can use any embedder model provider, which can that can be a hugging face, open AI, or cohere. And then I'll use the document writer component to write these documents into my document store. And here we also have some integrations like VVA, Qualram, Pinecone, Malvis, Open Search, or Elastic Search. And this is how an indexing pipeline looks like in code. I created the whole notebook with the whole example and I put the QR code here. So if you want to go and check it out, you can check this one by reading the QR. And let's see how we create these components. So first, I have my document store, which is basically the vector database abstraction in Haystack. Then I have the fetcher that fetches the documents um, from the URLs, I have HTML to document component, I have document splitter that splits each document by its sentences, and then I use this embedder model. It's a sentence transformers model that you can find on Hugging Face. Then I'll also again uh, use the component, the document writer component to write them to the document store. And this is how I connect, I add all of these components to my indexing pipeline and how I connect them. And before I run this pipeline, I decide like which URLs I want to include to my uh, vector database. And I put the URLs in this and I provide the URLs in the run function here. And now I have all my documents in my vector database. Now it's time to create this generative QA pipeline with this RAG approach. And this is how it looks like on in Haystack. Um, so this pipeline starts with a query. And as an example, I use like what is happening at OpenAI. This will be my query. And the embedded component will generate the text embedding for this query. Then retrieval retriever component will use that query embedding, sends it to the vector database. Vector database will return the relevant context to me. And then prompt builder will, will generate a prompt with relevant context, query, and relevant instructions. Then the generator component, this is the abstraction for the large language models, will use this prompt uh, to communicate with the large language models and the large language models will return a response. And this large language models can be from Anthropic, again, from Hugging Face, OpenAI, Cohere, or if you want to host them, it can be on Amazon SageMaker or in Azure. And this is how the Generative K pipeline looks in practice. Uh, so again, I have an embedded, embedded model uh, to create the embeddings for my query. I have a retriever to retrieve relevant documents from my document store. I have a template for the prompt. And here it's basically the same. Like in, I instruct the LLM what it needs to do. Then I provide the context in curly brackets. And then I also give the question so that uh, the LLM can answer the question based on the context. Prompt Builder takes, the, takes this uh, template and fills it with the relevant information. And then the last component is the generator. And 
Here I use ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, which is the model behind ChatGPT. But again, you can like use any other large language model. And I add them here uh, to my pipeline and connect them. And as the query, I ask like what is happening at OpenAI. And as an answer, it explains like what is going on at OpenAI recently, as I mean, maybe you know, it's like there has been some quite there has been some changes and there has been like some news at OpenAI, but like with this application, it doesn't really matter because we can provide the context and always get up to date information. Um, if you find Haystack interesting, uh, and if you are in the mood for fun um, and want to learn a lot about NLP and LLMs and generative AI, uh, we have prepared some challenges for you. So uh, during December, we are going to release challenges, 10 challenges, and you will be able to like solve some fun tasks but using Haystack and learn about like NLP, uh, Haystack itself, uh, by completing these challenges. And I left the link here. You can go to haystack.deepset.ai slash advent of haystack. And you can also find that link when you go to the website. You'll get to able to start solving these challenges starting from Monday, December 4th. Um, so this is about it. I left my social media accounts here. I left some links for Haystack. And if you want to see the whole presentation, you can also find the link on top right. And if you want to again join Advent of Haystack, uh, the first one will go on Monday. Thank you for, uh, thank you everyone for listening to me. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me in this, uh, in my social media accounts. Um, you can send me a message on LinkedIn. You can send me a message on Twitter. And yeah, thank you.